Hey all here OS Reviews. During this holiday shopping season, there are plenty of great deals on budget affordable laptops and today we're taking a look at yet another one of them from Gateway. This is their 13.3 inch ultra slim notebook going as low as $120 during the Black Friday Cyber Monday sales, but exclusively at Walmart. And that's because the gateway that we are talking about now is no longer the same brand that was famous in the 90s and is technically manufactured in the same factory as Evu, which by the way, we first took a look at about two years ago as part of their initial introduction. They had rolled out the 14 inch ultra slim laptop, which had a uh, Intel Core i3 processor. And I thought it was actually a pretty decent offering for what it is. Aside from being super low cost, the 13.3 inch model is of course more compact. And more importantly, it's powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 850 processor. So that's right, this is another Windows on ARM device uh, using a similar chipset that you'll find on something like a smartphone, a more high-end uh, tablet for instance, but it is running on a full version of Windows which is quite impressive. Snapdragon powered laptops are still relatively rare and the biggest selling point is going to be the energy efficiency. This particular model is rated to achieve a crazy over 20 hours of battery life. The other benefit of a Qualcomm chip is it also supports cellular. So this is a 4G LTE enabled laptop. If you pop in a SIM card, you can get data even when on the road. And we'll take a closer look at how it really stacks up later on in this video. It is otherwise supplemented by four gigs of RAM and a 128 gig of SSD. The SSD feels fine, but the RAM is admittedly a little on the lower side. Would have liked to see eight gigs uh, as we head further into 2023, but it is what it is. We do have a full HD resolution panel display, which is IPS LCD. Not a touchscreen on this particular model, but still a pretty good resolution. Aside from the laptop itself, we have just a quick user guide, warranty card, and also the charger, which is this barrel plug that comes included, although you can also use standard USB Type-C to charge up this laptop, which is great. This 13.3 inch model is, I believe, one of the only variants in their current catalog, which is constructed entirely out of aluminum alloy. Not only is the lid made out of metal, but also the entire base here also is constructed out of metal. So it feels as good as something like a Surface or a MacBook from the design perspective and when you're holding it in your hands, which is really impressive, I have to say. Now, by the way, they call this charcoal black, and the photos make it look a lot darker, but in reality, I think it's closer to a gunmetal gray or similar, really, to a MacBook in terms of the color, which I do really like. You can also find this model in a more vibrant blue, if you prefer. I really like the finish, which is super smooth to the touch. It's sanded off and just feels quite elegant. We have a one-piece hinge there at the bottom. The spine here features access to a USB USB Type A full size port, micro SD card reader, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and that's the nano SIM card slot for cellular data if you choose to use that. The other end features the full spec Type C port. There is the barrel plug for charging if you want to use that instead. I like the fact that they're both placed relatively close to the edge though, so the cable still plugs in at a pretty comfortable angle. And now here's a look at opening up this laptop with just one hand or one finger, I should say. Just pull it up like this and the entire thing just opens up like a dream. It's super smooth, the weight is well distributed, and the entire action here just feels super premium. It's not something that you'll find on pretty much any of the other Gateway series laptops that I've seen to date. So although I would like their laptops to be a little bit more consistent from model to model, there's no denying that this 13.3 inch version is definitely getting you a lot for what you're paying for. This is overall a pretty clean layout. It's still an island chiclet style keyboard. And for the size of this laptop at 13.3 inches, it's quite comfortable and large, easy to type on. Adequate for things like document and essays, as well as emails. I do like the fact that the power key is separated from the main keyboard portion, which is great. And the fact that the speakers are also on the top of the laptop instead of on the bottom. So they are less easy to cover up, which is also excellent. Although I will say that the keyboard here is unfortunately not backlit, but that is pretty expected for a $130 unit. Trackpad is also very generous in terms of sizing, although it is a little bit more on the stiff side. And in general, I didn't have any issues using it. It's a precision touchpad and 
overall does the trick even though it's made out of plastic as opposed to glass for instance. Now one thing I will say though is that the palm rest area here is technically made out of a polycarbonate plastic but there is very little to almost no flexing going on even as you're pressing down. The display is also very good for the budget laptop in terms of sharpness as well as colors are surprisingly vibrant. It certainly helps with the tempered glass that is protecting the screen on top which although is glossy is again unfortunately not a touch screen on this particular model but we still get relatively small and minimal bezels on the left right and the top side just a slightly larger bottom uh, chin there but still not bad at all and the top here just houses the aforementioned 2 megapixel webcam along with some microphones now despite the fact that it is using a qualcomm snapdragon processor uh, it still is eligible to receive a free upgrade to windows 11 as you can see there so you can choose whether to keep it in the windows 10 that it comes installed out of the box or 11. taking a closer look at the display overall it offers pretty decent viewing angles due to the ips lcd nature albeit it is a little on the gloss side. So if you are looking at how far back it will lie, you can see that this is kind of the maximum angle that this laptop will go back. Now a closer look at the software experience, you will find a handful of apps which have been pre-installed by Gateway, including Forge of Empires, which is the strategy game, along with a shortcut into walmart.com. Luckily, they don't take up too much space because in both instances, they really are just a bookmark. Otherwise, the version of the OS is Windows 10 S out of the box. S stands for safe mode and by default it will actually not allow third-party applications outside of the store to be installed. But as we've talked about in previous videos, exiting the S mode is as easy as pressing a key on the computer, so it's not really a limitation. In terms of system properties, we can see that out of the 128 gig SSD, about 81 gigs are remaining for you to install other programs and files out of the box. Not a ton of storage space, but you can always augment that by additional SD cards, thumb drives, and further cloud storage. Navigating around the UI, some initial impressions would be that it's all right. Opening up the start screen, all feels responsive enough, albeit I will say it's not going to be quite as fast as something like a Core M or a Core i series machine. Sometimes certain animations and widgets which are a little bit more complicated will take a moment longer to load as you can see there. Uh, so you are still talking about overall I'd say relatively entry level performance. This is not too far off from something like a Celeron, maybe just a touch faster than that and still impressive to see that it is running as well as it is on essentially a mobile chipset. Even though benchmarks, especially synthetic scores, I don't think mean as much as real-world performance, it's still worth looking at a quick reference. So the Snapdragon 850, clock speed up to 2.96 gigahertz, pretty big numbers there, but again, keeping in mind it's an ARM architecture, drawing just 5 watts of power, so just sipping. Uh, we are talking about a Passmark score of roughly 2,649. As reference, some other popular low-end Celeron Intel chips include the N3450, which is scoring just a little bit under 2,000, a very common chip found in other $100 to $200 laptops that we've seen in the past. A slight step up would be models rocking chips like the Celeron N4100, and another slight bump would be something like the Pentium Silver N5000 series, which gets roughly 2,600 on Passmark. So we're talking about something that is similar to some of those slightly more powerful Celerons and Pentium chips that we've seen over the past couple of months. Um, at least on paper, it's not too far off from that, maybe even a touch stronger. But again, that is just a synthetic score, and in real Real world performance, I will say that there's not too big of a noticeable difference uh, from many of those chips in terms of it's definitely a lower end machine and you do feel that it's not quite as buttery smooth as what you'll find on more expensive units. Uh, and again, due to the fact that it is so energy efficient and some emulation is happening behind the scenes. Even though we are using Edge Browser, which is already the best performing browser for ARM-based computers at this time, in terms of web browsing, I would really recommend staying in Edge for this computer just because of that optimization. You get better battery life as well as technically the fastest, smoothest performance possible. And the same thing can be said about many other apps as well. You're bound to find some edge cases when it comes to drivers or third-party apps, which just perhaps aren't 
aren't 100% there yet for a ARM chip, even though we're gradually getting there. A quick demo of what it sounds like in terms of the speakers, as well as playing back a quick YouTube video next. I'm going to also crank up the volume here and pull up our stats for nerds. Choosing 1080p to match the screen resolution. Alright, so some takeaways here being that you definitely notice some drop frames as you start interacting with the laptop, but nothing is obvious or noticeable in terms of the actual video footage that you're looking at, and you're able to still enjoy content without too much issues. So if you're using this primarily for YouTube consumption, Netflix, it certainly will suffice, and the super long battery life also is going to serve you well, where you can binge almost an entire season of certain shows, and the battery will still be sufficient. Some other final remarks in that video test you could hear is the speaker quality was also quite decent. Surprisingly, it doesn't sound too tinny even at higher volume levels, and because it is, again, facing forward, it doesn't get covered up too easily. So good enough for some casual entertainment. Web browsing also seems to be fair. It's actually doing a little bit better than I was expecting. If anything, the 4 gigabytes of RAM definitely is showing its age in spots. Uh, such as if you are opening up, I'd say, more than 10 tabs in the browser, oftentimes tabs will start to reload once you switch back and forth between them. Going forward, especially past 2023, would really like to see at least 8 gigabytes of RAM starting to be more of a minimum on Windows. Office apps have been optimized by Microsoft to run well on ARM, and so there's no surprise that PowerPoint, Excel, Word documents can all load flawlessly, as good as any Intel computer, to be honest, even on more complex complex calculations with Excel files that have pivot tables and more rows, charts, it still is handling itself quite well. Uh, the trackpad, I will say at times, could be a little bit more, uh, I would say, smooth in terms of its action, but for what it is, it certainly isn't bad considering the price range of this machine and also something like, let's say, a Word document also is handling itself quite well even as we are scrolling around, moving different animations like photos and creating different charts and edits, it's all keeping up without really too many issues. So again, for schoolwork, a bit of office work alike, this can be handled on here without too many issues. Going into, say, the store, you are able to download additional content and some, let's say, mobile versions of games, which can run quite well on the ARM chipset here. However, if you start talking about AAA-style games, well, first of all, this is definitely not a gaming laptop, uh, so it's not going to have enough storage. There is no powerful GPU in here to do that. But also, in general, you're still going to find some compatibility limitations. So although very simple games, a bit of emulation will work just fine, ultimately this is not going to be a gaming-centric machine unless you are playing primarily mobile-style games. So the best bet there if you do want to play would be streaming. Using services like the xCloud, you're able to play AAA-style titles on more powerful hardware elsewhere as long as you're connected to the internet. Which, speaking of, reception quality has been surprisingly good on this machine. Even though it is constructed mostly out of glass and metal, I was still able to pretty much get full bars when I'm using uh, both Wi-Fi as well as 4G LTE combined, basic creative tools like very light Photoshop edits, uh, as well as maybe stitching it together short clips, it will still be okay. But again, keep in mind that it doesn't have a very powerful GPU at the end of the day, so if you're doing some more serious video editing, that's not going to be the best fit. So that is more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Gateway 13.3-inch Ultra Slim Notebook, and as a whole I am reasonably impressed, primarily due to the ultra-long battery life, combination with the super solid build, the fact that you can open this entire hinge using just one finger or one hand, has cellular capabilities, all makes this a surprisingly good value, I have to say, for only $130. It gets a lot of those basics right. Granted, at the end of the day, it's not a very powerful laptop, so I would say this is still best suited for things like web browsing, keeping things very light. You can check out additional details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Gateway 13.3-inch Ultra Slim Notebook.